Hi, and welcome. I will give you an introduction to hypothesis testing in this video. We do hypothesis testing to answer research question. It involves the following six steps. We will go through each of these steps in details. It is important to estimate the sample size needed first before we go about collecting the data. This is done in step 3. Step 1 of hypothesis testing. In step 1, we state the two opposing hypotheses. They are the null hypothesis, denoted by HO, and the alternate hypothesis, denoted by HA. The alternate hypothesis is also called the research hypothesis. The null hypothesis always assumes status quo. That is, the same, or equal. No difference, or no change. The alternate hypothesis is the complement of the null hypothesis. Hence the two hypotheses are opposing in nature. We always assume the null hypothesis to be true. And we test it by finding the probability that this assumption is true. We do not test the alternate hypothesis. The conclusion of a hypothesis test is either accept null hypothesis or reject null hypothesis. Some prefer to use the term do not reject null hypothesis instead of accept null hypothesis but they mean the same thing. It means the difference detected is not statistically significant. The difference is likely to be due to sampling error. When we accept the null hypothesis, we say our test is not significant. When we reject the null hypothesis, we presume the alternate hypothesis is true, even though it is not tested. In this case, the difference detected is statistically significant. It is not likely to be due to sampling error, and we say the test is significant. Types of hypothesis tests. There are three types of tests. The right-tailed, or greater than test. The left-tailed, or less than test. And the two-tailed, or not equal to test. The right and left-tailed are also called one-tailed tests. We specify the type of test we are doing in the alternate or research hypothesis. The type of test indicates what the researcher suspects or wishes to show. If you are not sure what type of test to do, then do a two-tailed test. An example of when to do a right-tailed test. A study conducted 10 years ago found the mean weight of adults to be 70 kg. We want to know if the mean weight is still the same now. Whether we do a right, left, or two-tailed test. The null hypothesis is always the same. It assumes no change. The null hypothesis would be, the mean weight of adults now is still the same as 10 years ago. The mean weight is still 70 kg. Researcher A suspects that the mean weight of adults has increased, that is, it is more than 70 kg. Hence he would do a right-tailed or greater than test. The alternate or research hypothesis would be, the mean weight of adults now is more than 10 years ago. That is, the mean weight now is more than 70 kg. To test the hypothesis, the researcher would gather a random sample of adults, weigh them, and compute the sample mean weight of the adults selected. If the sample mean weight is significantly more than 70 kg, the researcher would reject the null hypothesis, and conclude that the mean weight of adults now is more than 10 years ago. The mean weight of adults is more than 70 kg. We know that in hypothesis testing, we assume the null hypothesis to be true, that is the mean weight of adults is 70 kg. A sample obtained from such a population with population mean of 70 kg would have a sample mean near to 70 kg. The researcher has to determine a critical value, an upper limit denoted by X bar critical, such that if the sample mean obtained is greater than or equal to the critical value, the difference would be considered significant the conclusion would be reject null hypothesis. In this case, we conclude that the mean weight now is more than 70 kg. The test is significant. The area to the right of the critical, shaded in blue, is called the critical region. However, if the sample mean obtained is less than the critical value, X bar critical, then the difference is considered not significant. And the conclusion would be accept null hypothesis. In this case, 
we conclude that the mean weight of adults now is still the same as 10 years ago, still 70 kg. The test is not significant. An example of when to do a left-tailed test. Using the same study, if researcher B suspects that the mean weight of adults has decreased instead of increased, he would do a left-tailed or less than test. The alternate or research hypothesis would be, the mean weight of adults now is less than 10 years ago. That is, the mean weight now is less than 70 kg. Similarly, the researcher would gather a random sample of adults, weigh them, and compute the sample mean weight. However, in this case, the researcher would reject the null hypothesis if the sample mean weight is significantly less than 70 kg. The critical value and critical region are now on the left tail rather than on the right. Similarly we assume the null hypothesis to be true. And the researcher has to determine a critical value, a lower limit denoted by x bar critical, such that if the sample mean obtained is less than or equal to the critical value, the difference would be considered significant. And the conclusion would be reject null hypothesis. In this case, we conclude that the mean weight of adults now is less than 10 years ago. The mean weight now is less than 70 kg. The test is significant. However, if the sample mean obtained is more than the critical value, x bar critical, then the difference is considered not significant. And the conclusion would be accept null hypothesis. In this case, we conclude that the mean weight of adults now is still the same as 10 years ago still 70 kg. The test is not significant. An example of when to use a two-tailed test. If researcher C is not sure whether the mean weight of adults has decreased or increased but suspected that it is no longer the same as 10 years ago, he would do a two-tailed or not equal to test. The alternate or research hypothesis would be, the mean weight of adults now is not the same as 10 years ago. That is, the mean weight now is not equal to 70 kg. In this case, we would have two critical regions, one on the left and one on the right. The researcher would reject the null hypothesis if the sample mean weight is significantly less than or significantly more than 70 kg. Again assuming the null hypothesis to be true, the researcher now has to determine the lower and an upper critical values, a lower and upper limit denoted by x bar critical left and x bar critical right. The researcher would reject the null hypothesis if the sample mean obtained is less than or equal to the x bar critical left or more than or equal to x bar critical right. In this case, we conclude that the mean weight of adults now is not the same as 10 years ago. The mean weight now is not 70 kg but less than or more than 70 kg depending on the value of the sample mean. The test is significant. However, if the sample mean obtained is between the two critical values both exclusive, then the difference is considered not significant and the conclusion would be accept null hypothesis. In this case, we conclude that the mean weight of adults now is still the same as 10 years ago, still 70 kg. The test is not significant. How much lower or higher than 70 kg is considered significant? It depends on the level of significance you choose in Step 2 of hypothesis testing. Step 2 determines how large a difference is considered significant. It is determined by the level of significance, denoted by alpha, that you use. It is common to use an alpha value of 5%, which is 0.05, or 1%, 0.01. In a right-tailed test with alpha equal to 5%, the area shaded in blue represents alpha. This is the critical region where we will reject the null hypothesis if the sample mean obtained is greater than or equal to x bar critical. If the sample mean is less than x bar critical, we will accept the null hypothesis. The raw score, x bar critical is the 95th percentile of the sample means. And this is given by the mean, which is 70 kg, 
plus Z0.95, time standard error. Z0.95 is the 95th percentile of the standard score. It is denoted by Z critical, and its value is 1.645. Area to the right of 1.645 on the standard normal distribution curve will be 5%, or 0.05. In a left-tailed test, the critical region is on the left tail. The area shaded in blue represents alpha. In left-tailed test, we will reject the null hypothesis if the sample mean obtained is less than or equal to X bar critical and accept the null hypothesis if the sample mean is greater than X bar critical. The raw score, X bar critical is the fifth percentile of a sample mean, and is given by 70 kg, plus Z0.05, times standard error. Z0.05 is the fifth percentile of a standard score and is negative in value. It is denoted by minus Z critical, and its value is minus 1.645. Note that Z critical is always positive in value. In a two-tailed test with alpha equal to 5%, the level of significance alpha is divided in two parts, with 2.5% on each tail of the normal curve. We have two critical regions. In two-tailed test, we will reject the null hypothesis if the sample mean obtained is less than or equal to X bar critical left, or more than or equal to X bar critical right. We will accept the null hypothesis if the sample mean falls between X bar critical left and X bar critical right. The raw scores, X bar critical left is the 2.5 percentile, and the X bar critical right is the 97.5 percentile of the sample means. The critical values are given by 70 kg, plus minus Z0.975, times standard error. These two critical values are denoted by plus minus Z critical. Z critical has a value of 1.96, minus 1.96 on the left tail, and plus 1.96 on the right.